Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Geld show Dorian Mincer, whose name you might know because she is the co-author of a another former guest of the Goldstein on Geld show, Roberta Taylor. They wrote the couple's retirement puzzle together, and Dory actually also co-authored Lie, Live Smart After 50. Dory, real pleasure to have you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today, Doug. So the implication of the title of your book, Live Smart After 50, is maybe that people aren't living so smart after 50 these days. Do you have a a, a good suggestion for them? Yeah, I think be intentional. I think that's my suggestion for people. I think what happens is, you know, people now 50 sort of think, wow, retirement years are so far away. I don't need to be thinking about that yet. But my sense is the earlier you start thinking about how you want to live the second half of your life, the more prepared you are and the less likelihood that you're going to end up just approaching, you know, the second half of your life just by default. You know, a lot of times people talk about this sort of goal setting, and I think it's a scary word because you say, what do you mean, what am I going to do with the second half of my life? So what do you mean? Well, I think there's a lot of areas that are important, and goal setting is certainly part of it, but I think what my experience and with my my clinical work, my experience is that by the time we reach mid-age, and now because we're living longer, mid-age is sort of thought about as 50 to maybe 75, by the time we reach around 50, things start to shift a little bit inside of us. We start thinking about, you know, who am I? If we're in a relationship, it's who are you? Um, who are we? <laughs> um, I, I think that there's some shifts that happen so that how we define success begins to change, what we want to do with our time begins to change, and I think it becomes so important to take time, you know, around mid-age, if they haven't done it before, I mean, it's kind of good to do it throughout life, to take a little time to assess, you know, sort of what's important to you, what are your values, what are your goals, you, you mentioned the word goals, you know, meaning what's important to you, what do you hope to do, see, experience, um, conversations you want. What, what What's important to you so you don't reach the end of your life with regrets? My father once said something like that to me. In fact, sort of the phrase you're describing is he said, uh, you know, you don't have to kill yourself at work. No one ever on his deathbed said, I just wish I spent more time at the office. Exactly. I mean, nobody says that. And so it's important to think about what really is important to you. And it doesn't mean not working, but it means but I always like the phrase trying to figure out how to fit work into life rather than having to try to squeeze life into work. So isn't there a, a practical element to this? Let, let's talk about your average 50-something-year-old couple, and they've, been, they've got careers, and because they've been in those careers for many years, they're probably financially successful. And they may say, you know, it's not my favorite thing to do, but it pays the bills, and it's paying for the kids to get through college. And, you know, if they're in the sandwich generation, they, they're helping their parents out as well. They don't really have the options to necessarily make a choice that's, that's a life-changing choice, do they? Well, it's a really important question because it's very hard for people when there are a lot of family responsibilities and obligations, but that's just part of how life is. I think what's really most important to start with is talking with a financial planner such as you, Doug. <laughs> okay, um, thank you. And I, I really do believe it's so important because um, it's money, but it's more than money, really. And I think it's important to figure out what, you know, what kind of money you have, what do you need. We're living longer, and I think it's important to recognize that you know, sometimes we may have to work, and many people want to work, but many have to work longer so that you don't outlive your money. And what's important to keep in mind is that it's not just a number about money, but it's it's really trying to think about what are your hopes and dreams and goals. You know, what do you want to do? What do you want to see? What do you want to experience so that you don't reach the end of life with regret? And I think it's important then. That, that helps put a framework around how much money you need. And I think it's so easy to get disillusioned and say, you know, you know why even think about you know, having goals, you still need to have goals because it's important to you really recognize that you know, we can't control everything, but there are certain parts of life that we can control, and you want to control the parts you can. And I think, you know, being able to think ahead 
helps you be able to create some of the vision and mission that you want so that you can, you know, work toward that. And I think it certainly is true that you want to be able to have some control, and I appreciate you're making a plug for financial planners, <laughs> but it's important to realize that the money is not the goal. It's, it's that the money that you save and work for and invest is supposed to help you to achieve your goals. We're talking with Dory Mincer, who is the co-author of a couple of books, The Couple's Retirement Puzzle and Live Smart After 50. She also actually has a, a fabulous blog, which everyone should check out at www.revolutionizeretirement.com. She's been talking to us up till now about what people need to think of maybe as they're beginning to plan getting into retirement. But, Dory, let's talk about what happens when people retire as a couple, but where they get the age of retirement and only one of them retires. Sometimes you find one of them for health reasons or practical reasons or just, you know, he's done, <laughs> stops working. But the other one is working. And yet there could be a lot of problem because, you know, they, they, there could be resentment or from either side. How do you tell people to deal with that? That's another really great question. I think the first thing is to recognize you're not alone. It's very, very common that people are out of sync with each other. Um, because of energy levels, health issues, age, and also there's so many more dual career couples now, and it's not unusual that, you know, um, a man might, you know, who's maybe been the breadwinner all along is kind of want, ready to wind down, and the wife's sort of at her prime. Um, so it's important to be able to talk. I, I would say that the, the key element here is talking together so that you appreciate what each person is experiencing and and really understand, you know, one person may really want to work um, and the partner may resent that because, you know, the partner is not working and kind of wants a playmate. Um, and, you know, the other person may feel like, oh, I'm so jealous that, you know, you have all this time to do, you know, hobbies and volunteer work and, you know, I've got to, you know, bring in the money. So talking is the most important thing. So let's let's dig into that a little more because, quite frankly, I, I myself have said that to couples and I've had guests on the show who've said that to couples. But I think there's a practical uh, disconnect, let's say, between the therapists who say you have to communicate and when you're down and dirty, you know, at home and the, the husband, let's say, he is a, uh, a an avid chess player and he's happy to retire and play chess all day and his wife is out there uh, going to work and commuting each day. And, you know, and then she comes home. How can she really tell him, you know, I'm not happy with what's going on, or, you know, you're a lazy bum, and he says, what are you talking about? It's time to retire. Well, that can happen a lot, and I can, one one warning to start with, and then I'll give some suggestions is, when you say you're a lazy bum, that's attacking, and you're going to get met with, most probably, with defensiveness or reactiveness or anger. So, so that's one thing to kind of keep in mind. You know, actually, in the couple's retirement puzzle, um, we came up with a acronym that I think is really helpful. It's, you know, we say have a blast when you're talking. And let me just kind of tell you a little about it. The B is for blaming. Um, blaming gets in the way. It's so helpful to think about I statements. And by I statements, it's more um, I'm feeling such and such. You know, I find it difficult when I come home and you've been, you know, playing chess all day long and, um, and I've been working and, you know, what would really make me happy is if, you know, you had dinner ready or if you greeted me with a big kiss or some kind of thing like that. The I statement does much more than blaming, so avoid blaming. The L is for listening. You know, none of us or most people really have not learned how to be good listeners. Um, in my field, you know, there's a lot of training we take to, have, to develop what's called active listening, and I think financial planners have the same kind of training. Um, but I think in couples, it's important, and with your kids too, with your parents, it's important to really listen in a different way. Listen without interrupting. You know, it's so often, you know, we hear the first few words, and it's so easy to kind of roll our eyes and say, oh, I know what's going to come in next. I don't, I'm just, you know, not going to listen, because you're already thinking about what, how you want to respond, or you're interpreting it, and none of that settles well. <laughs> that is very so, true. That, yeah. yeah, 
Now, I, sorry, I'm trying to listen, but I, I, I want to go over what you said now, which is from if you want to have a blast when you speak with your spouse, is uh, the B stands for blaming, reminding us that you shouldn't blame the other person for uh, what you see as the problem, and rather you said to use I statements, I feel like this. And the second excellent piece of advice was to listen without interrupting and just to be able to to understand on the face of it, what your what your spouse is saying, not to try to interpret it, which I think is critical. And I'd like to hear, I'd like to know what the AST of BLAST stands for. But, Dory, we're just about out of time. So tell us, what book can we read to learn more about that? And then how can people follow you and the work that you're doing now? Okay, the book is called The Couple's Retirement Puzzle, 10 Must-Have Conversations for Creating an Amazing New Life Together. It's available via Amazon, so my hope is that people will will buy it. Um, I also want to mention another book before I tell people how to get in touch with me, um, which is Live Smart After 50 that we mentioned um, at the beginning. Live Smart After 50 is actually published through the Life Planning Network, which is a group of interdisciplinary professionals who offer therapy, coaching, financial planning, um, real estate, writing, so that book you could find at livesmartafter50.com, and actually the Life Planning Network is lifeplanningnetwork.org. My website that Doug mentioned earlier is www.revolutionizeretirement.com. I have a fourth Tuesday interview series that I'd like to welcome all of you to. It's called Interviews with Experts to Help You Create a Fulfilling Second Half of Life. And actually, Doug is going to be my guest on November 25th. Thanks. So looking forward to that. Many people come. I'm looking forward to it, too. Um, and you can learn more about it at www.revolutionizeretirement.com. And you can learn more about the work I do. I, as well as other people who are also members of the Life Planning Network, provide coaching with people around the globe. Now that we have Skype and all, um, you know, it's available within, I'm sure, within your own country, as well as people being able to work, you know, from our country to your country. Sounds fabulous. Okay, listen, Dory, we will put links to, to that and to every, all of the, the sites you just mentioned at the show notes at goldsteinongelt.com, so it's easy for people to find you and to get hold of those books. Dory Minster, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was a pleasure. <laughs> You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.